No, no, just plug it in like that. Replace R with what? Oh. What is R? Now what is R? R is false. Replace R with that. What is this? Q is true. And then a value. Ah, yes, I did. So you guys can feel as comfortable as you <laughs> He did not finish his homework. Negation. Good, it's a negation. Officially, it would be compound, right? Because how do I write it? Not, 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 not P. And you can say not S, not T, whatever the hell letter you want to use. Use PQRST. Those are like X, Y, Z sort of with uh, logic. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. Good old Socrates has always got to come in here. What is up with that? That's pretty. I don't know why I have. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Let's stop playing. I'm up here and I'm down there. It's freaking out. Um, Socrates is mortal or. Yeah, Socrates, I know. Uh, just in case you're wondering. Does he know? Yeah. Socrates yeah. is mortal yeah. or Socrates yeah. is a man. You want to see it? <laughs> so this is a what? Disjunction. Uh, Disjunction. Disjunction. <coughs> you want to spell correctly? <laughs> What symbol does that get? Down arrow. Okay, sure. I like it. That, like that. You or you, I don't care. All right? Uh, or the symbol that we didn't see much of in the Super Bowl. Uh, Socrates is mortal. What would that be? P. 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 Socrates is a man. Q. There you go. It's nice. So it's a disjunction, very simple disjunction. Cool. I'm not going to push any buttons. It's just a little bit. Um, how are we doing? Is that all right? Right. I enjoy driving down the Pacific Coast Highway. Simple, because you just need. Alright, so those of you, there's a little section like that on the test. By the way, I, I have the practice test today, so if, if you have to leave early, you probably can pick that up. Um, Alright, so truth tables. These both have only two total letters in them, right? Over here, Q shows up twice, but it's still not, it's still just two variables. 
So you only need the four true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. You just need that. Now, I like what I'm seeing. Uh, I can't remember if the book does this or not. Maybe it does, and that's why some of you guys are doing this. But I like that some of you guys are kind of building this. So let me, let me I'm going to do this one the, the way I've shown you, and I'll do this one the way I've seen some of you guys do it. And you can pick whichever way you like. So the way we sort of did it in class was we put the whole dang thing down. And we just started to analyze this. So what would not P be? What would I put here? False, false, false. Not P would be false, 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 false true, true. Now what about when I do the or? So let me put Q down here too. True, false, true, false. So or is only, or is only false when they're both false. So I put an F there and everywhere else gets a T. So that's the answer to that. And what's the last thing I did? No. Not that. So then this would be false, false true, false, false, false. And that's your answer there. So, so I had done it where I just I had already counted for the um, not not to be there. So like it was not not me. So um, I still got the right answer in the end. But how? I'm sorry. So instead of doing, so instead of making them two separate, I made them one. So it's like kind of like in algebra when you take like ah. the one or like whatever's outside. So the other right answer you've got, it, but but what did you actually evaluate then? So you made the negatives to cancel. You did yeah. P and or then the Q opposite of P. Not. And you did an or between them. Yeah. So you shouldn't have gotten the right answer. I did. All right. So if we do, um, all right. So if we do that, if we do, we think that this becomes P or not Q. Yeah. So let's analyze that. Yeah, we do that. Doing it good not to write the right pen in general. Uh, so true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. So if I analyze uh, P or not Q, so not Q is false, true, false, true, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, or is only false when they're both false. So they're both false there. Is that the same thing we got? What did we get? We got we got true, true. true, true. Yeah, what do we get? No, we got, uh, we got false, false, false true, true, false, 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 right? So is that the same? I don't understand. Yeah. So something went wrong. Because this is the statement you did look at, right? And you have the or, P, and not Q. So you should have gotten this. And or is going to be true very often, right? Well, let's talk about it right now, since some of us might be interested in that. I'm sure you guys maybe crossed your brain. There's got to be a freaking way to do uh, this, right? There's got to be, what was it? Yeah, it was a, there's got to be a way to kind of like distribute that or something. So we already know it doesn't distribute quite the same way as we're used to. In a biconditional, if it's a negative, like if something does not, is that a negation too? No, uh, it's a negation if that's the only thing. Otherwise, it's a biconditional, or, you know, unless it says it is false that or something. But we, have, we that's coming up here in a minute. Okay. All right. So to start talking about this a little bit, let's talk first about something more simple. Let's talk about this is actually kind of easy to think about. So, so I don't know if you guys remember, but I said a negation is sort of the op. We know it's the opposite of something, but one way to think about it is. When is it not true? So when is P or Q? Uh, like if I said you or you, clean this room. What's the only time this room will not be clean? Yeah, so if you're P and you're Q, and P means you cleaned it, and not Q means you didn't clean it, if I say P or Q, either one of you, clean the room, the only time it's not going to be clean is if you don't clean it, which is not P, and you don't clean it, which is not Q. So look at this. This is interesting. And this is not the same as distribution in algebra. This It just sort of looks like, but you got to realize it, it, it makes the P become negative. And it does make the Q become negative, but it also affects the sign. It makes the sign change to the opposite. So what do you think would happen? You guys kind of with me here? Yeah. 
That is the actual way that distribution works. And it's not really distribution, it just sort of looks like distribution, so it makes it easier to remember. These are called, uh, so, what it, so that's one law, and the other one, and then I'll tell you what they're called. What do you think this would be then? Stay with me now. I think it would be tiring. What's that then? What do you think? We did this one. Not P or Q became not P and not Q. So what do you think not P and Q would become? Not P or not Q. That's crazy. And, which is, and it's true. Come Q. This is called the Morgan's Laws. All right. Not the Morgan's Rum, but the Morgan's Laws. Yes, sir. So if you would have done that in 2A, would it work? Totally. Yeah. Let's try. Ready? So if you apply the Morgan's Laws to this, so remember, I want to remind you the answer we got. Shit, where's my original? Answer? So many things. We got this answer, right? False, true, false, false. Right? Yeah. When we did it straight up like this. You guys with me? So let's test to see. What would this become if I distributed it now the correct way? What does this statement become? Yeah, P and not Q. So let's analyze that. Let's see if we get the same answer we got earlier. So I got true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And not Q here would be false, true, false, true. How are we doing so far? Great. Great? All right, I like that. It's better than I thought. And is only. And is only. True. True. When they're both true. So where are they both true? Second. The second one. Everywhere else is false. Is that the same answer we got earlier? No. Yes, it is. False, true, false, 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 true, false, false. Good. That's not a proof, but that is a, a validation, a verification. So that's how you could rewrite it. If it's got a negative on the outside, we now know how to rewrite an and and an or. We don't know how to rewrite uh, if then or even a by condition, right? So since we're talking about it, we will finish this thing out here in a second. But this is something else I wanted to talk about today anyway. What the hell would an opposite of a conditional be? And it's not, it doesn't come in and make the, the arrow point up or something crazy. Uh, turn it around. <laughs> exactly. It says, no, it's, no, you pee. Yeah, you no, it's not. Um, so tell me this. Remember, go back. I love the situation, if you make an A, then I'll buy you a car. Because all the rules of it kind of flow from that. It makes physical sense to us. So the negation of something is when it isn't true, right? Is one way when it's tr when the first is true, the, the negation is false. So when is that, when would you be angry at me? And this is related to what the rule is for if then. Um, when would this be false? Yeah, if you made an A, if you did what you were supposed to do, so we're going to figure out what this equals. This equals, or is equivalent to, you did what you were supposed to do, but, and what's but, right? If you do what you're supposed to do, if you made an A, but I don't give you a car, well, that's the opposite of what you said you were going to do, isn't it? So that's the opposite of what I said I was going to do. So what is that again? You did what you were supposed to do, but, and what's but? And? I did not do what I said I was going to do, right? That is the opposite of an if-then. You can always analyze the opposite of a logic statement by thinking, how would I disprove it? How would you show I was wrong if I said this? I'm wrong if I said this if this is the situation. That's when I'm wrong. That's when I lied. If you made an A, but I did not get your car. I'm okay without distributing. <laughs> oh, well, too bad. This is a rule now, right? I like that. You don't have the option. I don't, I don't want that one. No, it's there too. And some of the homework deals with this. I, I need you to memorize the Morgan's Laws, the two that we just talked about. This one I'm not going to make you memorize, but it does show up in the homework. And the homework, you just use your book, so I don't care. Uh, good. Now, now, yes, ma'am. Can you show the other Morgan's Law back on the board? Yeah, really quick. All right, so they're in the book, too. Uh, and you're like, I don't want my book yet, man. <laughs> so not P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. 
not P or Q similarly is equivalent to not P and not Q. How we do? So that's De Morgan's laws. Those are De Morgan's laws. They're the ones that look exactly like distribution if you take into account that you distribute to the sign too, which is different from algebra, right? If you think about it. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. So coming back to this. So what about this dude here? So again, I make my little table. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Now let's do this the other way. And I like this. You, some of you guys do this. You do, uh, well, let's see. How the hell do you do this? You're not P. You guys not P and then the not P and Q. So not P would be false, false, true, true. Not P and Q. There are variations on this too. This is kind of a construction approach. You construct the pieces of the original statement. So I need a not P and Q, right? So what's not P and Q? When, when is it what? I love that question. It's only true when both are true. Yeah, it's only true when both are true. So it's only true here. Let me stop there for a second. You guys with me? I just looked at not P and Q there, right? And now the last thing I want to do is, is Q implies what I just had, right? And, and the uh, advantage to this is it kind of helps my eyeballs know where to look. So now I'm doing Q implies this. So I just have to look between these two, right? And again, if you don't want to do it this way, you don't have to. But if then is only what when what? Yeah, TF. It's false when TF. So that's false. True, true, true. So that's what you should have gotten there. If you did it the other way, you should have gotten false, true, true, true also. How are we doing so far? Okay. Cool. Just appropriately pressed. Okay, good. <laughs> Number three, if you understand truth tables, dear God, you have to understand this because you're doing just what you did up here, just less of it. I know that R is false, so I can write not false. Or, and what's Q? Q is true. And now I just have to analyze that. So what do you do first then? Yeah, what's not F? True. And what's true or true? True, because or is only false or they're both false. That's, a, that's more like uh, x plus y minus z squared, and they tell you x is 3 and y is 4. You plug it in, and you do it, right? That's, that's exactly what that is. I like it. So this is the same way. I just plug in true implies true or false if and only if not true. So what's this? True. True. Or, and what's going on here? False if and only if false. True or true, true is true. true. Yay. That is showing me the work. Alright. That's too much work for you. It's too damn bad. Show some care. Alright, is everybody cool with that? Alright, so we've got a couple more things I want to do. Um, so we did the Morgan's Laws, I like it. Uh, I want to show you, uh, uh, let me just say this right now so you guys don't freak out too much. Um, I'm going to make section 3.5 and 3.7 extra credit. Does everybody understand? Normally that, when I say the word extra credit, it's, it's kind of hilarious. Very often I'll see a few people go like that. One more. There you go. So section 3.5. <laughs> Section 3.5 and 3.7, extra credit. I'm sorry, I'm being a dork. Um, you're so patient with me. The 3.6 is just regular. Yes, we're going to do 3.6 right now. And to get into 3.6, I want to show you a little something. And uh, I didn't watch this when I was a kid, so don't even say it. Yeah. So I'm always surprised. Has anybody ever never heard of Abbott and Costello? Like, Abbott and Costello. Is this, are you guys like, what the hell is that? There you go, okay. All right. If you guys are honest enough to say yes. There you go. That's unfortunate. I know it's a long time ago. Hell, they were before my time. Hopefully you understand that. I'm not that old. Uh, but this is awesome. I love this shit. They, they loved doing 
uh, math stuff in, the, in a lot of their bits, believe it or not. And that sounds like, well, shit, I'm never going to watch them. <coughs> Actually, you are. You're right now. You're going to do it. But let's, let's see. Uh, if you don't like it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, an army blanket? Never mind about that. You owe me room rent. All right, here's twenty-eight dollars. Twenty-eight dollars, fine. But just a minute. You owe me thirteen weeks at seven dollars a week, and that happens to be a lot more than twenty-eight dollars. Well, that comes to twenty-eight dollars. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. Do you mean to say that you can prove that seven times thirteen is twenty-eight? Well, it's gotta be. Sorry, it is because Mr. Rapp and I had uh, that's twenty-eight dollars. That's what you get. If you can prove it, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will give you the room rent for nothing. You will? But. If you don't prove it, you owe me double the back room. Is it a deal? That's a deal. Okay. Do you happen to have any Crayola line? Crayola line? I got it. Oh, you have? I got the Crayola. The 7 and 20 is going to come out 13. That's your way. That's my way. It's got to come out right. Now, first, I put down the 7. Right. Now, I'm going to divide the 7 and the 28. Yeah. I put a 28 there. Okay. Is that cute? <clears throat> now, here we go. 7 into 2. 7 will not go into 2. It will not. That's a very big seven to push into that little bell, too. <laughs> we ain't gonna hurt that little two, are we? Of course you won't. So we take the two. Open your hand. Yes. And I put that two right there for safekeeping. But don't drop it and don't lose it. Now, seven to eight. Once. Once. I put the one over here. One over there. Now, we're gonna carry the seven because it's very big and it's getting heavy on my shoulders. And I'm gonna drop the seven under there. Now, seven from eight. Is one. Is one. I put the one down there. Mm -hmm. Now it comes. Would you mind opening your palm of your hand, please? I would like to use that too. Open it up. Give me that two. You've had it long enough. Oh, oh. I'm going to put that two right there. Now, seven into 21? Three times. That's right. Seven into 28? 13. Oh. Wait a minute. You have to prove this even better than that. You can prove it very easily by multiplication. You mean you want me to multiply it? No, no, not multiply, multiply. <laughs> multiply. All right, all right, all right. Multiply it. Seven times thirteen is twenty-eight. Go ahead. Okay. Now first, we gotta put down a thirteen, right? Right. There's a thirteen. Times seven. Times seven. Right. Seven weeks times thirteen. Right. Seven times three. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Seven times one. Seven. Seven. Seven and one. Eight. <laughs> and two. Eight. <laughs> Convinced. There's one sure way of proving this. One sure way, and that's by addition. You want me to addition it up? I want you to put 13 seven times on that wall and then draw a line and add them up. You want me to put down 13 seven times? That's right. That's cut them out, right? <laughs> There's one. One, two, two, three, three, four, four five, five, six, 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 seven. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the idea of spreading them out like that? Well, it looks like a, a flock of seagulls going to hit the lucky pole. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to add them up, right? All right, go ahead. Here we go. Three, six, wait seven. Minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me do the adding this time. Am I right? Three, six, and then. Just a minute. I will do the adding. Then there'll be no mistake. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Twenty-eight thousand. <laughs> All right. Sure. Now, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so my point of showing you that is twofold. Uh, one is just so you understand that they exist. So maybe you'll overlook them up. Uh, secondly is the, obviously, hopefully you guys know that there were some incorrect premises that he used, yeah. right? Some, some premises he built his argument on that were wrong. <laughs> obviously. Uh, or else everything you know is just out the door. Uh, what is one plus three? Four. And what's four times seven? So that's why the math looks like it works the way it does. You can do that with anything. Do you understand? You can do 7 times 12 would be 21. You can do the same thing he just did because 1 plus 2 is 3 times 7 is 21. So all the mistakes he made was related to that. Are you guys semi with me here? Uh, and, and I'm not going to ask you to point out all of his mistakes because it, it, they, they go so fast that I don't know if you caught all of them. Um, but here's the thing I really want you guys to understand. We're going to, in section 3.6, looks at how strong an argument is. I'm sorry, yes? Before we go, she says, for on 3-4, the homework, I didn't understand the inverse, converse, 
Oh, that's right. All right, all right. So very quickly, that's my best. Um, so one last thing from 3-4 before we get into 3-6. Uh, this is the conditional here, right? Uh, and then this is on page 133. The converse just does this. It just flips it around. And if this is true, is this necessarily true? No. And that's one big mistake people make. One of the sections I'm skipping is section 3.5. And when I taught this course linked with an English class, uh, I definitely did section 3.5 because it all, it's all about fallacies. And so they talked about that in their English class also, the fallacies that we make in everyday conversation and, and the, the, how people misuse them. Uh, but if I said, if you make an A, then I'll buy you a car. And this says... If I buy you a car, then you made an A. Well, I could buy you a car even if you didn't make an A. Remember that? So that they aren't necessarily opposites or equivalent to each other, right? Okay, maybe. But that is a fallacy people make. And then there's the inverse. And the inverse just says not P implies not Q. It just negates it directly in a way. And then the one that actually works is the contrapositive. And this is what you're talking about here, right? Okay, good. It's like, please. Now watch. If you make an A, then I'll buy you a car. If I did not buy you a car, then what must have happened? You must not have made an A then. Are you guys with me? So those do go with each other. If this is true, this is true. This is false, this is false. These are equivalent. These happen to be equivalent to each other also. Right? But all of these two are, are mistakes people make as far as how to use this. They think that they can use it like this, they think that they can use it like that, and that leads to logical problems, and it leads to misunderstanding. You kind of with me? Okay. So real quick, if I had, uh, let me see if you guys can do this, not S implies T, what would be the inverse of that? Good, because what does it do? It knots what's there, so not this is S. I like it. So don't, you got to realize these are rules. Whatever is there, what does the inverse do to it? Negates it. And whatever's there, what's the inverse do to it? Negates it. Right? So that would be the inverse of that statement. The only difference with the contrapositive is, what would the contrapositive do? Contrapositive would be that just turned around. So not only does it change, uh, it, not only does it negate each one, it also turns it around. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. So these are rules of what to do to this to make each of these. So they're going to ask you to say, given this, write the converse. All right, you just turn them around. Whatever the hell they are, you turn them around. So write the inverse. Okay, whatever the hell they are, you just negate both of them, right? Cool, I like it. So that's going to show up a little bit in the homework. Take ass. All right, so three, six. Well, at least get started on this. Um, all right, so we got this, what they want from this? This is section 3, 4 at the very end. Well, you, that's what you recorded it. Oh, yeah, it's true, but, you know, I figure I should be nice. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying something else. Um, so we, 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 we have a few minutes. If I said... So, so section 3.6 is a little bit different. The reason I showed you that picture, that, that little thing again, is you can have, you can identify if something's true or false. That's what we've been doing. 3.6 is very different. It says, is the argument that you're making strong? So, for example, uh, if I said all dogs like uh, brownies, uh, Right. <laughs> All dogs like brownies. And I said, I am a dog. Therefore, I like brownies. Now, several things. Uh, this argument is strong. This argument is valid. And the conclusion is true. I do like brownies. But what's wrong with this? What's what's kind of if you start to analyze the truthfulness of the parts of the problem? What's wrong? Oh, number one, thank God. Okay, I'm glad that you guys realized I'm not a dog. 
And also, is this? I mean, maybe not all dogs. I think most dogs would certainly like brownies, considering what they else they eat, right? They probably they, they won't like it later, and neither will I. If you give them brownies, but you guys kind of with me? So this statement, especially, we'll just stick with that one. That is not a true statement. But is the argument itself valid completely? Because that and that do lead to this. So it's two separate ideas. Section three six is all about not is it true. Not is any part of it true, not is the conclusion true, but it's do these premises lead to this conclusion? That is a strong argument. The form of the argument is strong. So what sucks is if, for example, I know somebody's guilty. I'm a lawyer. Logic is very much like being in a courtroom. I know somebody's guilty. I saw them kill this dude, and now I'm the prosecutor. That might be a thing of uh, whatever. I should have accused myself, but screw it. And I just can't put together a strong enough argument. So it's true that he's guilty, but I can't prove it because I can't put together a strong argument. You with me? Or somebody puts together a strong argument, I'm innocent, but their argument is strong. Something in there wasn't true, but nobody pointed that out. The defense wasn't good enough. Are you guys with me? So something wasn't true. They got to a false conclusion, but the argument was strong, so I'm thrown in jail. Maybe killed. I don't know. Depends on what state I'm in. You guys kind of with me a little bit? Just the idea behind section 3.6. Um, so, we haven't, we haven't even tried a problem out yet, but let me give you guys the practice test, and then uh, next time, Monday, of course, is what's happening Monday? Holiday. Holiday. If you didn't know that, don't come to school. School will be closed. Um, Wednesday and